Let's all stand up in our feet as we continue with our new series, and we call this series, Even the Impossible. Everybody say, Even the Impossible. Tayo po ba ay may hinaharap sa kasalukuyan na sa ating pananaw, ito ay imposible. Sa ating uh, lakas, sa ating karunungan, sa ating lahat-lahat na, combine everything together. Is there anything that you're facing today that you would say, grabe, hirap na ito. <sighs> Lord, kailangan ako mag-fast. Pero hindi yung fasting eh. Ano kayang gusto sabihin ni Lord sa atin? Let's read God's Word in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Here's what the Word of God says. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on, pressing in on him to hear the Word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw two boats by the lake, But the fishermen, he had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from that land, or from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into a deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. And they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. I am a sinful man, O Lord, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. So all, or, or so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, and were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their nets to the land, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord for us, for today and the rest of the week. Lord Jesus, thank you that once again, we will encounter you and your word. May we wrestle with your word today, that even as Simon encountered you for the very first time, as if, Lord, we're going to encounter you for the very first time. And Lord, I pray that you will draw our hearts to you. May you speak, may you show yourself to us in a greater way. Bless the preaching of your word for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please take your seats. In this particular narrative, in this story, This is one of the rare moments where people will, by the droves, would come. Nagdagsaan po, naggather together to follow Jesus. And they all gathered and crowd themselves to Jesus for the purpose of hearing His Word. Most of the people, when they would follow Christ... They would follow Christ for the reason that they wanted to witness the miracle. They wanted to see how Jesus would cast out demons. Because he said, I have come to bring the kingdom of God here on earth. And he was exemplifying what the kingdom of God is. So he would cast it out. Of course, he would preach. But people were intrigued because of the miracles that is happening. But in this particular narrative, we could see there, they were gathered to hear God's Word. But one good thing about this, in this particular narrative, is that while Jesus was ministering, He never failed to see the need of the people who were there. He saw the need. He met those needs. And he dealt with 
the greatest need of all mankind. So habang nagmi-minister po si Jesus, hindi lang po for the sake of sharing His Word, His heart was after the people whom He was ministering to. And I remember Pastor Steve would quote in his book, and he would tell us this in our equipping time with him, in our mentoring time with him. Sabi niya ganun, based on the ministry of Jesus, he said, It's one thing to preach to the people, and another thing to love those people whom God has called you to preach. In other words, if I would be here today, and all I could think of is God's Word for the sake of preaching, and I would study it excellently without me having a heart to all of you, I think I disqualified myself. I don't have the right to be here today preaching God's Word if I don't have the heart for people. I don't think it's not a matter of performance or the gifting that God has given us to exemplify, to demonstrate, and yet we're thinking of the gifts but not really meeting the needs of the people. Jesus would never do that. While he ministered to the people, he saw the very needs of the people. Let's look at this in verse 1. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats of the lake, by the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Three observations that we could see here based on the text that we read. Number one, the Lord knows what we need. The Lord exactly knows the needs of the people. When the people gathered, they were looking forward, meeting their desire. What is that? We want God's word. Bring us the word, Jesus. We gathered here to hear from you. The Lord knows exactly their need, that the Lord met their needs by bringing the spiritual food that they were asking for. They were there not for the miracle, but they were there to encounter the word of God. Jesus strategically positioned himself when all the people gathered there on the shore. He niram niya yung boat ni Simon. Dude, niram ng boat mo. Instead of gathering them in the land, he got the boat. It's just like this a boat facing you. You are in the shore, I'm right there in the sea. Think about how creative Jesus is. He would position himself strategically so he would see every person, left and right, there on top, to hear him so he would preach the word of God. Spiritual food is very important in our lives. That's why Jesus fed them in their spirit. Why is that? Why is it that people wanted to hear God's word and Jesus would give it? Isn't it that Jesus said that man does not live by bread alone? You cannot live this world by the mere fact of feeding your physical bodies. We live by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. And I hope you're here today. Not just to listen to God's word, but I hope you are walking with God and filling yourself, feeding your soul, feeding your spirit with God's word. How's your soul today? How's your spiritual life today? Baka nagsa-starve na. Pag ngayon nakita tayo physically, ayan, tumataba na naman tayo. Pero deep within, how healthy your your spiritual man. How big your spirit inside of you. That's the real you. And Jesus was after to feed their spirit. In verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out 
put out into deep and let down your nets for a catch. Jesus was after not for their spiritual needs, but even for their physical needs. Jesus knows. Jesus didn't stop himself for teaching. Tapos na, you can go, you can go back to your homes. He knows this man toiled and labored, didn't get nothing. Jesus was saying, I care. I care for those people who labored so much and would receive little, receive this limited resources. God is after our physical needs. Jesus is after our welfare. He didn't stop ministering to their spiritual needs, but he went on wanted to provide for their physical needs. Again, the Lord knows what we all need. You coming today, He knows exactly what you're looking for. He knows exactly what you're asking God for. He knows exactly the deep desire of your hearts. I believe the Lord wanted to align us May our desires be His desires. May we align our desires to His desires. And maybe sometimes we don't need the desire because baka hindi sa ikakabuti mo. And He's after you. He's after our soul. He's after our welfare. First, He brought spiritual food rather than physical needs. Kung tayo yun, Hindi, kailangan kumain ka muna. Kailangan maging malakas ka. Inuuna natin yung physical needs natin. Pero kung makikita mo yung yung segment, yung sequence, pinakain muna ni Lord yung spirit. Pero hindi niya nakalimutan yung welfare ng tao. What is God speaking to us? In our own context, we always think of what I want, what I need. But God knows what you needed most is to feed your spirit. And He's after your growth. He's after to grow your spiritual life. And that's what this Christianity is about. This is not about victory. This is about your walk with God in a personal way. May we hear God's word today. May you treat God's Word in a different way that we can't live life apart from His Word. Spiritual food first. And then God took care of the physical need. Kaya kanina, nung babago mag-service, natuwa kami. I was engaging with some of you, tapos may mom pumunta. Dala ng cupcake yung anak. Si Nathan din tao. Nasaan si Nathan din tao? Ayun, si Nathan. Kaya lusog. Nas, Nathan, nasaan ka? Wala. Baka kumain. Ayun, ayun tinapos. Ayun, buko kita mo. Kumakain ka pa rin ba? Si mami ni Nathan, pumunta rito talagang, anak, main ka. Huwag kang kumantab ka, main ka muna, di ba? Which is great. That's what it is. What we're saying is, di ba, we wanted to be filled, to be full. And God is after that. Tama ba, Mara? So kaya, we're all, God is after our needs. Amen? Second observation. The Lord provides more than what we need. Sino po sa atin dito may mga pangailangan? Maliyata. Sino po sa atin dito may matinding, matinding pakailangan? Woo! Ayun, yun po yung... Yung iba wala, ay ba't po na kayo nandito? <laughs> Nahiya pa eh. Lalo na yung team ngayon, di ba? May pakailangan. Lord, ba paano ako makakapunta? Kailangan namin ng visa. Yung iba, wala nang visa-visa nga, di ba? Lahat ng pam- taas ng pamasay kaya. Sabi ni Simon sa verse 5, Master! 
We told all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. Tahirapan kami, Lord. Pero sa lamlam niya, Lord, alam mo? Alam mo, naghirap kami para mangisda, wala kami nakuha. Pero Lord, sinabi mo, I began to realize how important that statement is. And I want to submit to you that God's provision is dependent on His Word and not just your labor or your effort. I got this from Bishop Jure. He said this. Sabi ni Bishop Jure, yung salary natin, hindi sapat yan. Kung magre-relay tayo sa salary natin, hindi sapat eh. Kaya nga buti ngayon, di ba? Meron ng investment. Di ba? Let's think of the future. Let's prepare for the future. That's great. But the whole goal is God wanted to provide for us more than what we are receiving. And this speaks of God's provision that it's totally aligned and in line with the Word of God. Our labor does count, but not the provision. If we're not, if we're just going to rely with our salaries, is not enough. Tumataas yung bilihin, tumataas yung renta, tumataas yung tuition fee, tumataas yung pamasahe, lahat tumataas ang sweldo. Buti nga eh. Buti nga, galing ni BBM eh. Di ba, in-increase niya yung, yung wage ngayon, di ba, ng worker. 500 na yata plus. Tama ba? Sorry. 600. Sorry eh. Okay. Sorry. Tao lang po. Tao lang. Pero alam ko tumas. Okay. <laughs> But the scripture would say, all hard work brings to profit. But I want you to hear me. Yes. But we don't just rely from the profit of our labor. We wanted to experience God's provision. Because God is a God who is a rewarder of His people. Hello. He wants to reward His people. Kung anak ko, bibigyan ko lang, di ba? Hindi ko bibigyan ng, uh, sige anak, bigyan, oh, ito lang pera natin, bigay ka doon na doon sa mga naglalako. Siyempre, di ba? You want to give the best. We parents, we want to send our, our kids to the best school. Tama? But there's a cost, there's a price to pay. Ang mahal! <laughs> Lord, ang mahal. Eh, pero mahal ko yung anak ko eh. Eh, mahal mo din yung anak ko. Eh, mahal mo din ako. Eh, may pangailangan ako. Eh, hindi sapat yung sweldo ko. Hindi ko naman pwede sabihin, Lord, kasi pastor lang ako. Pastor ako, Lord. Kaya, Lord, I'm believing for God's provision. Hindi dahil pastor ako, dahil anak mo ko that you will provide for my needs. Hello? And God wanted to provide for our needs. He's a rewarder. In verse 6, when He had done this, They enclosed a large number of fish and their nets, uh, their nets, sorry, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners. Karabi, may partners na doon. And the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both the boats so they began to sink. My friends, God's provision is far more than enough you would ever expect. When God provides, it's not just enough. It is far more than enough that you expect. Yeah. And He's after our needs. It's far more beyond what you ever thought of. For He and all who were with Him, verse 9, they were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken umaapo. Sobra, sobra. Ano gagawin natin? Mamamatay tayo rito. Malulunod tayo rito. It's uncontainable. Isn't it that in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, For now to him 
who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Alam niyo ba yun? Ganun ka-powerful ang believer. Ganun ka-powerful ang son ni God, ang mga anak ni Lord. God is going to provide because it's within us. But the way God provides is this. He wants you to understand that He is able, not you. Eh, naglabor nga, nagtoil na nga, di ba? Talagang sweat, talagang binigay na lahat. Wala pa rin, kulang pa rin, Lord. Kita ni Lord yan. But God is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think pag si Lord magbibless tayo. Hindi dahil sa iniisip mo, blessing. Ang problema, masyado tayo limited. Minilimit natin si Lord, gusto natin ito, pero gusto pala ni Lord, ito. Ang kulit mo eh, ito ka na, ito, gusto ko ito. Pakinggan mo naman yung word ko, tingnan mo naman ako. Masyado tayo focus Doon sa way mo, eh, I have so much ways and different thoughts of providing for you. Would you hear and get into my word? I'm a God who's going to bless you more, far more, abundantly that you will ever thought and ask me of. I believe the Lord wants to bless you this year and is preparing for it. As you seek the Lord and ask the Lord, I believe the Lord wants to bless you far more than you ever think or imagine. Itong facility, hindi namin naisip to. So, totoo lang ah. Nag-open to, dapat nasa baba lang kami. Pero marunong si Lord eh. Because we thought of you. We thought of people getting saved. We thought of making disciples. We thought of people coming in to encounter God. And we thought, high end. Okay, let me say, high end. Pag lumabas ka, meal, magano, 350. Pinakamababa. Mag-Jamaican ka na lang sa baba, sa basement. <laughs> sa totoo lang, kaya nga pinopin na natin to after for Victory Group. May kape na dyan. Para hindi ka na bumili. Yung iba, ayaw pa rin eh. Pero si Lord, huwag natin ilimit. Ibe-bless ka ni Lord more than what you ever thought or imagined because that's who God is. In verse 8, but, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. First time you na-encounter si Lord, hiniram niya yung boat. Hindi binayaran ni Lord, mayroon nagpakita si Lord. Hindi nagpakita ang gilas. He was just showing who, you, who he is to Simon. Nagulat siya. I want to say this. God's provision isn't given because you deserve it. The provision of God is not given because you deserve it. You deserve it? Yun nga eh, pag yung kabutihan ni Lord, yung Yung puso ni Lord para sa atin. Pag pinigay ni Lord, yung parang tipong nakakamangha, Lord, may ganito kaming center. Para, Lord, talaga ba? Yung church ng victory, sa totoo lang, hindi sa pang, pang mga mayaman. Narinig yun na ba yun? Victory, mayaman yan. Hindi po. Yayamanin lang. <laughs> Wag po tayo mag-isip ng ganun. We cater for all people. We have Real Life Foundation. We have people, you don't have any idea of people who would come here. But they're after God. And that's what God wants. God wants to reward those people. But He will reward you not based on what you think because I deserve it. No, that's why when, when Simon encountered Jesus... He saw himself, Lord, who am I? I'm a sinful man. Depart from me. I don't deserve this blessing. We never had this blessing, but you've given this to me, Lord. Lord, ako, immoral. Ako, may issue. Ako, may struggle. 
Ako, Lord God, hanggang ngayon, hindi ko pa nag-give up yung 5%. <laughs> okay, 10%. Pero Lord ka, God. Jesus is Lord. Pero Lord, 95% lang. Akin na muna tong 5%. Pero si Lord, alam ni Lord eh. But He will not stop blessing you. Because of who God is. We don't deserve this. No one ever deserved to be blessed by God. But God's provision is given because it's not a matter that you deserve it. But God's provision is a reflection of God's generosity and goodness. My friends, God is a generous God. He miraculously provides for Simon the very thing that he labored cannot be compensated to the blessing of God. It's more than enough. And most of you here, you've been labored so much that with this post-pandemic, some of you, you're still gaining and you have not recovered. But I believe the Lord wants to assure you today that He can provide for every need and He can provide more than what you ask of Him. Why? Because He is a rewarder, a generous God. He is a good God, and He wants to bless His people. That's the nature of the God that we serve. Can you say amen? Yung position nyo, yung businesses natin, yung privileges nyo, yung compensation nyo, yung profession nyo, yung vocation nyo, yung office nyo. Gusto ko lang i-remind tayong lahat. Hindi dahil sa magaling ka. Without God's favor and provision, you will never get that favor. Your job is the one that God gave you. Don't you ever think, ang galing ko. The moment that you think about that, oh boy, that's what the mammon says. Galing ko eh. Talento ko. Galing ko dumiskarte. Taga Ateneo di Ateneo. Eh, ayaw magpa... Ayaw magpatalo ng UP. You. And others. You're just others. Eh, ayaw magpatalo ng UST. Sabi ng UST, 1611, before you came here, we were in existence. Wala pong ganun. God gave you the wisdom, the knowledge, the talent. It was all wired because God made it happen for you to be who you are. All these things, we don't deserve it. It's God who provides for all our needs. And He will provide for more. So my friends, don't you ever abuse. Never misuse the influence, the office, especially treating your employees, that thing called politics, stepping on someone for your own benefit and for your own gain and for your promotion. If you're here today and you're listening to this, may you hear the Word of God. We treat everyone equally and we re regard everyone highly because what, that's what the Bible says. Amen? Wala akong magaling dito. Wala akong sinong powerful. Wala yung sa mata ni Lord. Kung anong apelido mo. Walang Constantino, Constantino dito. <laughs> Sino ba yung Constantino? Wala naman talaga. Okay, sorry po. Okay. Balik tayo, balik tayo. Sorry. Verse 10. And so also were James and John, saw it, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. From spiritual food, 
to physical food, for God providing for their needs. The Lord was preparing them for their purpose. Third observation, the Lord involves us to meet the most pressing need, the catching of men. They were fishermen, fishermen, right? They were catching fish. They had a hard time. But the Lord uses that provision to let them know it's not just a provision, but it's my purpose and the greatest need of all, which is the souls of men. Why is that? I don't want you to miss this. Given na po sa atin, si Lord ipoprovide niya lahat-lahat. Wag tayo mabulag sa provision. For God wants us to enjoy. Definitely. Hindi, K, hindi KJ si Lord. He wants you to enjoy life. But it's not about vacation. It's not about having properties and having this and that. God will meet our, all our needs more than beyond what you could expect. But I want you to understand this. The most pressing need of all is those people who doesn't have Christ in their hearts that if they die and they don't know Christ, they will go and bust right there in hell. And God was preparing them. He would say, I met your needs, but I want you to understand more than the provision that I have for you. It is about the purpose of God. And what, it, what is that? Is to save mankind from their sin and the wrath of God. That is why we need to engage in this world. That's why we're sending a team to the nations. Why is that? Because of the purpose of God. Don't you ever miss this. Hindi yung parang, oy bless ako. Social media, eto. Eto yung blessing. Eto yung new car. Eto yung bagong office. Eto yung blessing ko. Eh, sino in-engage mo? I prayed for this person. Chak! I preach. I engage. I share about Christ. This person whose marriage is going to break. I was there. Do we celebrate that? Or we celebrate the provision? Don't you ever miss this? There's a pressing need. Kailan lang tayo rito? Dami paglabas mo dyan, Pag bumaksak tong building daw, wag naman sana. <laughs> Lahat tayo save. Paano sila? <laughs> People need the Lord. Jesus help. What profits a man if he gained the whole world? Provision, lahat na riches. What good is it then for a man to have that yet forfeits his soul? You're praying for the blessing, the provision, it's going to be there. It's in his word, it's God's timing. But it's the soul of people who needed the Lord. Kaya kahapon nag-equip kami. We're reaching this group of people. No matter who they are, this group of people cannot be discriminated, but we have the heart, the compassion to reach out in this particular people who would bash us and tell us all these kinds of bad things about the church. We're ready. All men are the same. Sinners who needed God. But it's not just a provision. It's God's purpose. 
more than the provision, God gave us purpose. My friends, God will take care of you. But will you have His heart? Will you have His heart and be part of the solution of the most pressing need? For people to be saved. Please don't miss this. Hindi pa tapos si Lord sa'yo. Don't limit yourself. The devil is out there to put fear, to question you and your integrity. It doesn't matter. Eh, kung mamamatay niya, isipin mo integrity mo. <laughs> I was talking with, to someone yesterday and said, you know, I would engage and invite them to church. Kasi sometimes, may, may limitations ako eh. Why would you think that the goal is not to bring them to church? The goal is for you as a church to reach out, engage, share, and preach the gospel. Ibig sabihin, kung hindi mo dadalhin dito, hindi masasave yan. Kaya nga nandudun ka eh. Para masave sila. My friends, never miss this. Two responses. For God's provision, Simon acknowledged Jesus as Lord. Verse 8, But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For God's provision, he acknowledged as the one who provides. He was saying, I am a sinful man, O Lord. It was a lordship issue. So you'll take care of my needs. I acknowledge who you are. But the second response to God's purpose, he left everything and trusted God. Sa loob niya, fisherman ako. Pupunta ako, magpag-engage ako sa tao. Ang galing ko mag-fish. Pero tinawag ko ni Lord sa hindi ko specialty. Hindi ako maboka. Hindi ako ganon na nagsasalita. Peter's case, he left everything and trusted God. Verse 11, and when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him from catching fish to catching men. My friends, God miraculously provide for us his provision and purpose to meet every need of this world. I want us to ponder this. And as we worship God today, would you dedicate yourself to God? God's provision is there. It's just a matter of time. He will provide for you. He knows what's going on with your life. But never, ever miss why we live for Man does not live by bread or wood, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But at the same time, he said, I'm after the soul of men. What profits a man if he gained the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Who's responsible? It's us, the church. Can we all stand up and dedicate ourselves and worship God and say, Lord, may I receive your word. May I wrestle your word and whatever you have spoken. Let's sing this song once again. Guide. 
Dakila gaya ng ibon sa kalangitan Bawat kailangan Bawat kailangan Itutugun na Panginoon Panginoon Ikaw ang aming tanging kailangan Walang hanggan at tunay Ang iyong katapan Raise all our hands up before the Lord today. Lord, we acknowledge you as the one that we all need. Even as Pastor Anthony said, that apart from you, Lord, we are no one, nobody, we're nothing. But Lord, today we lift our hands in worship signifying acknowledging that you are the greatest need of every man Lord even as we lift you up and raise our hands I believe the Lord wants to pour out his provision he knows what's going on the Lord is assuring you that he sees your need and the Lord, as you cry out, the Lord wants to pour out His provision to all of us today. Whatever that need is, maybe you are in debt, maybe you're giving up in your faith because of so much pressure that you all face. I believe the Lord is right now taking the burdens away, but yet giving us the assurance that God will meet all our needs far more than abundantly that we expect. Some of you here, I believe, expect God this week. Expect God this year will be a miraculous provision of God being poured out in your life and in your family. You've been asking God for this. And I declare that today, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. But as the Lord provides, He's going to provide with so much more that it's going to be uncontainable and want us to receive that by faith. Lord, pour out your blessing, your provision more than what we expect based on your word and based on who you are as a generous God, our rewarder. As we lift up our hands, I believe the Lord 
is causing our hearts to have compassion for the lost. Our purpose, your purpose in this world is to engage, is to penetrate this dark world no matter what because the church is more powerful than the kingdom of darkness. We represent the kingdom of light and the Holy Spirit is there. The purpose is for us to fish for men. Declare that your friends will be will be saved. Your bosses will be saved. Your partners will be saved. Your neighbors will be saved. Your relatives will be saved. Your friends, lost people out there will be saved. Because as you dedicate yourself to God, He wants to fulfill our purpose. Our purpose. And that is to reach out and catch men for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Can you put down your hands right now? If you're here today, if you're here today and you never surrendered your life to Jesus, this is what the church is. It's having Christ in our hearts that we could have a personal walk. And if you don't have, can I lead you to Christ today? By just being honest to God and say, God, I missed you. I'm far from you, but I want to give my life to you. I just want to pray for you if that's who you are. Would you say this prayer? Say this prayer after me. All heads bow down and eyes closed. I'm talking to you who doesn't have Christ in your heart. Say this prayer out loud to Him. Say this, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm a sinner. And you are a good God. Lord, thank you that you died on the cross for me. And you rose from the dead so that I could have life. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I put my trust on the finished work that you've done for me on the cross. I receive you today and receive the gift of eternal life. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Could you open your eyes? Honestly, if that's who you are and you pray that prayer, would you raise up your hand on the count of three? How many of you pray that prayer sincerely and honestly and you say, I gave my life to Christ today? Would you raise up your hand at the count of three? One, two, three. Raise up your hand. We have one over here. Anyone else? Yes, thank you so much. Anyone else who prayed that prayer sincerely? You did? Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? You prayed that prayer. Anyone else? I believe there's some more. It's a personal ball. You prayed that prayer sincerely. It's a prayer to God. Anyone else who prayed that prayer? Please raise up your hands. Anyone else who prayed that prayer? Thank you so much. Anyone else? Thank you. Can I ask you to please come here in front? I just want to pray for you personally. Can you do that? All of you pray that prayer. I can see you. Please do come. Please do come. If you do want to pray for yes, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? The guy there. Or did you pray that prayer? Can you come here in front? If you they pray that prayer, please do come. Praise God. We'd just like to congratulate you. We prayed for you. But we just want to give God the glory for your new life and so we want to stand with you as a pastor we want to make sure that you grow spiritually amen how many of you believe that the Lord has spoken to you guys God's provision God's purpose God will fulfill that in our lives amen let's raise up our hands with the Lord today Lord today we commission Every individual, every believer, no matter where they are at, I pray for open doors for them to preach your word, to share their story. I pray that people will be saved because of your purpose. But as we fulfill your purpose, you will bless your people indeed with so much more. Father, we receive this by faith. We step out, Lord God, and be the church out there in the world. May your will be done. May your kingdom come. We command them with the blessing of the Lord by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone would say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday and our prayer and fasting this week.